Art fixing has been a subject of discussion since the internet was made. Well, kind of. It's gone from helping an artist develop their style to taking it by force and tracing it until it was deemed good enough. For years now, it's been a thing, and with each passing year, it only seems to get worse and worse in the community. It seems that I didn't really understand the full facets of this discussion and the implications of it until after I decided to make a video about it. So hopefully, I'm not too insensitive or demeaning of anybody's opinions. I'm going to put this preface here. Please don't show anybody in the comments any sort of hate for either agreeing or disagreeing with me and my takes. Also, with that, you're completely allowed to voice your own thoughts and begin discussions with me about it, just none that become hostile or cruel. So, this discussion has a bunch of layers, a bunch that I can't really get through all at once. I'm gonna try to cover as many as I can, but I'm not perfect, so bear with me. As well, there are some things I simply won't touch on because I'm not fully educated on it myself. Either that or I just don't want to share my thoughts on it. I think that's a pretty fair barrier that I can set for myself. Whenever I see artists on YouTube discussing this, there's some YouTubers that maintain a deep sense of anger in the way that they deliver their opinions through both tone and vocabulary. So for the sake of avoiding that, I'm gonna try to be as calm toned as I can be. If you prefer that kind of style, that's totally fine, but just know this video is gonna try to be a certain level of calm. However, I can't promise to be unbiased in every nook and cranny of this conversation, since before anything, this is a commentary video, not just a video essay. If you disagree with me, that's entirely okay too. Just let me know your opinions in the comment section. Oh, before we begin, hey, hey, don't skip. It's not a sponsor, I promise it's something interesting, like for real. I just wanted to say real quick that the community has been growing quite a bit and now is a better time than ever to join the official Fromey server. If you're watching this, there's a high chance you're an artist yourself and the server as of now is made up of mostly artists. As well, we're approaching art fight season, which the server is all extremely excited for. I'm gonna have it on screen, this is my art fight card and these are some of the characters I'm bringing to the table. Should I use a video like this to show off my page and ask for art fight mutuals? Probably not, but will I? Absolutely. <laughs> Many of the artists in the server are planning to aim their first art fight attacks at others within the server, so if you're looking for more art fight mutuals, this is a perfect place to find them. Plus, if you want to just get the chance to talk to me and help me with opinions and research for videos, joining is extremely fast and simple. If you're interested in any of this, then please consider joining the server. With that out of the way, let's actually begin this loaded and complicated discussion. So, art fixing. Where do we actually begin this conversation? Again, tons of layers, blah blah, let's just start by constructing the different aspects of it. There's a ton that we can cover, but we'll only be discussing mainly these three. Art fixing in relation to requested criticism. This can be when someone submits their work to another artist and requests feedback. Art fixing in relation to unwanted criticism. This would be when someone takes another person's work and fixes it without any request for it and so on. Then, of course, there's art fixing in relation to headcanons and race. This one is probably the reason you're watching this video. I feel it important to discuss the first two since people always make it just about race since that's the most attention grabbing. Which is totally fair, I'm probably gonna do that for the thumbnail too. But at the very least, I want to mention these in this video too. So please, if you're just here for the drama and race swap and headcan inside of it all, just bear with me through these first two. So, this is the most respected and liked version of the whole art fixing trend. So again, basic rundown. This is when someone will submit their work to a more advanced artist, asking for feedback in their work. You can always tell that something is off, but don't exactly know what it is. This is when a review from a better artist can really help. Some of the most popular artists for this at the moment are YouTubers Angel Ganev and Jackie Duraco. I know I definitely <laughs> mispronounced that, but these two are pretty much the good cop, bad cop of the trend. 
Jackie is the more popular of the two and the more polite one as well. She will deliver pretty firm criticism though and point out the fundamentals that can absolutely improve your work. Because the eyes are so big and we love a big eye, it's fun, it's cartoony, but when everything is big on the face, you know, nothing is big on the face. She describes her strategies that helped her as a Disney artist, which is what gives her critiques merit and value. However, Angel Ganev can be a bit more firm and sometimes insulting when he gives this criticism, at least in his older content. Simply Kid says, Angel, I chop chop head off because I don't know how to draw bodies. Well, that's actually a good strategy, but I'm not really sure whether you know how to draw heads either. Still, his fan base is entirely aware of the way he gives this criticism and is still appreciative of both the comments he makes and the visual aid he provides. However, people are also aware that Angel Ganev is a self-taught artist, selling the principles he taught himself, those of which can only really extend up to beautiful portraits. Because of this, there are times that his critiques can be helpful only for visual appeal, never actually the rest of the piece. Overall, when you're requesting advice from another artist, you have to understand the experience and sort of advice they can provide. Asking Angel Ganev for advice on how to make a dynamic pose may not be the best idea compared to asking Jackie or even Ethan Becker, as those are the departments the other two artists are actually developed in. As well, keep in mind that it's hard to get your art seen for a big YouTuber's video at all, so understand that if you're going to submit any of your work. Personally, I've only ever had my work critiqued in this way once. I have an amazing artist friend named Huska, who you should definitely follow her on Instagram by the way, who I knew before I had ever picked up a pencil to draw, which is also known as three years ago since that's when I learned to draw it all. She was there in my highs and lows, watched me transform into an artist that makes illustrations like this when I started making them out like this. <laughs> I would ask her a lot of the time how I can improve, what to study on, and one day she offered me the chance to simply draw over my work to deliver the message straight across. I agreed and it resulted in a critique I still pay attention to today. I struggled a lot with proportions and angles and this visualization of that struggle still helps me a lot. If you think this is something that'll help you, then by all means, either submit your work for these big channels or ask someone you know for help. These visual aid really do help a lot, both by fans' accounts and my own. Again, it's the least offensive of the art fixing trends since it's really just a you get what you pay for kind of ordeal. Nobody really throws a fit over it unless someone gives bad advice. Which, come to think of it. <laughs> The Colleen ordeal was messy, to put it short. Colleen had taken the mean Angel Ganev shtick of roasting people submitted art and then drawing over them in ways that she thought were best. Most of her fixes were only in the interest of making the artwork look better, rather than actually helping them develop as artists. However, the big controversy that occurred with her was when in one of her art fixing tutorials, she made the implication that anybody with protruding lips and a stuck out chin was reminiscent of a gorilla, and went on to say that it's something that should never be drawn. This, of course, upset many people, as these are features that are seen prominently on black people. I made a video about it nearly a year back, and while it does cover the situation better, I don't know if I really recommend it to understand the whole ordeal. It's just pretty opinionated and crude, I was just starting out on YouTube, so by my current standards, it's just not a good video. But if you want to understand the situation better, you should watch this amazing video by Rin instead. It covers the situation really well. Coolin is often pointed as one of the big bad examples of how to not give someone helpful critiques when they ask for them. It's not as much of a fix as much as she's simply redrawing their portraits in her own style. In addition, some of her fixes are just straight up not good. There's been multiple times where she puts her redraw beside the fan submitted one, and it looks horrid in comparison. In the nicest way, if you can dish it out, you can lick it back up. All of her criticisms are for the benefit of a style that she believes is best, rather than developing skill. With most of her fan base consisting of a beginner artist, it's extremely unhelpful to make these sort of critiques. That's as much as I can say in terms of criticism that people ask for. Some artists are good at it, some aren't. Just know the skill set of the person you're asking and see for yourself if the criticism is actually helpful for you or more so to boost the ego of the artist.
This one is closely tied to the last point I mentioned earlier, but I'll try to refrain making too many comments about it just yet. This point refers to artists that see another person's work and trace over it to add fixes they believe are necessary. You may have already seen Mohamed Agbadi's videos covering these situations, since he just makes a lot of videos on the topic, but I'll still re-summarize some of them for this video. So this is Sam Desart. If you're an artist, you probably know. He's beloved in the artist space for his art tutorials and stunning portraits. One day, he makes this tweet. So good to be back in my studio was the caption, followed by his latest portrait at the time. Of course, it's a great portrait, nothing less of what Sam can usually produce, and very normal for his timeline. Someone replies to this post with their own redraw, vaguely alluding to the fix that they made. In this person's reply, you can see they slightly protruded the upper lip to be more realistic, rather than Sam's softer style. From what I can just assume, this is in line with the controversy Sam faced for a while, the criticism that Sam always drew his women as soft and always the same, whilst his male portraits had definition and uniqueness. Whatever you want to think of same face syndrome and Sam Desart aside, this is purely out of line. Sam Desart is one of the biggest artists online alongside Loish and others, but that doesn't make him subject to art fixes for no reason. Sam isn't submitting his work to some random artist on Twitter, he's showing it to people since he knows the value in his work. For someone to take his work and fix it in a tune to what they think is right without it being warranted is cruel, something that the majority of the art community can agree on. There's many cases of art fixing that I can delve into, but I already know there's a specific one you're thinking of. So everyone, put your hands together and clap along and start up the drum roll for the internet's biggest hated art fixer. Z fixes art, get on out here! Oh Z, it's wonderful to see you again! Well, that, no it's not. But most artists online are already aware of Z fixes art. Still, if you're unaware, let me get you up to speed. Like their name suggests, Z fixes art is, well, an art fixer. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a singular case of Z being presented a piece of work to fix before doing so. It seems as though Zeig just kind of does it for whatever they decided to not be good enough. From the behavior I've noticed, I'm nearly 100% sure Z is just a troll and a baiter. There's absolutely no way that Z's behavior is in tune to what they actually believe. For first, this style has only gotten worse and worse since their arrival to online infamy, which to me just translates to, oh look, the worse it looks, the more engagement, which kind of just seems like they're doing it on purpose. As well, I've seen the potential theory about Creepshow art fabricating the entire account to not only bring in hate and engagement, which is something that she often did, but also to play the victim by making Zfix's art drag their brush against one of her own works. The supposed fix here was to stop sexualizing women, to let them have normal bodies that could contain body hair or extra weight. However, Crypto Art went on to explain that the original piece was a commission of a real person, someone who actually had the body she drew. If you ask me, I don't have any clue or care of if this account is some random thing Crypto Art pulled. We're currently at a point in time where the real question is, what didn't Crypto Art do? So I just don't think it's worth pondering over. I mainly bring it up because it just shows how much of a Date this account seems to be that people are wondering what online figure actually was behind it. Now, now, hush all of you, I can hear you, I hear you commenting and shouting about the fact that I didn't comment on the racial change, and I didn't because it's easiest to bring this up instead in my third point. Dear God, keep me safe. Okay, this is a point of contention that you really need to be careful for. One wrong comment and you set off a landmine of comments calling you pretty much every sl found on Wikipedia. Again, let me remind us all that this is a discussion, one where I bring situations and opinions that should all be respected, okay? So, here it goes. Contrary to popular belief, I do believe there are some situations where drawing a character with darker skin 
when they don't explicitly have dark skin, is okay. Okay. Okay, you know what? That went surprisingly well. I actually thought that the world was gonna explode. Okay, okay, but seriously, I do have some opinions that are less than popular from what I've seen, but before anything, back to the thing with Z-Fix's art. Do I think it's okay to race swap someone like they did with this piece? Absolutely the fuck not. This is just weird and foolish. Drawing someone who seemingly appears to be a real person as something that they're not is extremely uncomfortable. Specifically because this, again, is a real person. It's not right to cosplay as another race, nor to push one onto another human being. I think that's just the basic understanding that everyone has. I've never seen someone appropriately defend Z-Fix's art because there just isn't much to defend. They take art that establishes characters and, in one case, a person, and change their race. In many cases, they do this with Asian characters as well, which many people call to as Asian erasure. Everyone has their own opinion and headcanon and anything, so finally I get to voice mine. When it comes to headcanons for characters, I generally don't mind them, especially when it comes to those for characters that aren't human. You think Sonic the Hedgehog is black? Awesome. You think Pinkie Pie is German with ginger curls? Cool, that's a cute idea. You think a certain cookie in Cookie Run is a person of color? That's great. Speak your truth. Does that mean I think fixing someone else's art to pertain to your headcanon is okay? Again, no. All opinions for a headcanon on a character that isn't human should be valid since, I, I mean, we're not really working with much. You can't say for sure when a rainbow horse is or isn't a person of color. There's just no way to tell sometimes. In those cases, I think that it should be up to interpretation. For example, there was this tweet by an artist of their personal rendition of humanized Sonic characters. Another artist replied to the tweet with their own version of the same piece, one that was colored over the original. It depicted the same art, but with knuckle skin black and his hair more resembling of dreads. To take someone else's work to emphasize your opinion on a fictional character's race isn't fair by any means. That's work that someone else made and worked hard on. It wasn't meant to be drawn over or stolen for anybody else's opinions. When the second artist came under fire for the stolen artwork, they made the defense that they were fixing a whitewashing. It could have been an honest mistake, but <laughs> come on. There's many interpretations of each Sonic character, and even if canonical designs were released for the main cast, it wouldn't make any interpretations wrong or foul. This goes for any media containing characters that aren't human, by the way. You can't whitewash a character that's literally the color red in their media. However, that doesn't mean you can't headcanon them to be a person of color. Just make your own art of it instead, no need to touch someone else's work and interpretations when you have a pen at your disposal. Or if you can't draw, I don't know, commission someone? Or just write it? Or even just keep it in your mind, like whatever. If you don't have explicit permission from an artist to alter their work of your interpretation, don't touch it. I think that's a fair statement that I can make. Another example of this art fixing stuff that's pretty popular online is this redesign of Candace from Genshin Impact. If you don't know, these designs are actually extremely common for the Sumeru characters of Genshin Impact. Sumeru is a fantasy nation that has references and inspirations from many places, such as ancient Egypt, Persia, Mesopotamia, and India. As well, it shows ties to the Islamic Golden Age. Because of this, a large portion of the fanbase believes that these characters would have dark skin, and often redesign these characters of Sumeru as Hoyoverse designed all of them to be as pale as possible. Do I have any issue with people redesigning Genshin characters? Only in a small sense, but I'll explain that in a little bit. The redesign people have an issue with is this photo of Candace. It was drawn over and edited to make her darker and change the texture of her hair. Many critiqued it for being another sensitive Genshin player that couldn't leave poor billionaire company Hoyoverse in their designs alone whilst others praised it for finally bringing proper representation that they believed Candace and Sumeru deserved. As for me, I lay somewhere in the middle. Many don't know this, but Candace is actually based off of a real historical figure, Kandaka, a Sudanese queen. You can see a lot of her inspiration in the design, mainly in the golden rings around her body and limbs. 
As well, Candace is one of the two darker characters for Sumeru, which can also be a tie to their inspiration with Kandaka. I can find ways to defend both sides of this argument. Hoyo versus simply taking inspiration from this historical figure, but not actually trying to recreate her. However, to do so with one of the biggest changes being the color of her skin can almost be seen as callous, since it seems to have been done mainly for the appeal of their audience, those of which prefer white and non-ethnic features for their main cast. Both sides have their fair arguments, and I can fight this battle with myself for hours. However, focusing on just this art fix and redesign, here are my thoughts. Originally, I hadn't really seen much issue with this. I think redesigns and headcanons for the Sumero characters are fine, so what's the harm? Hasn't this video so far been about combating the idea that it's okay to draw over other people's work? Originally, my opinion was that any headcanons for Sumero characters were fine, and right now, that's still the case. If you do your own research and have your reasons to believe a Genshin character would look different, go for it. But now, I personally believe that you should consider creating your own art instead of tracing and drawing over the official sprites. Again, it's about 99% possible that Hoyoverse won't see it, let alone care, and same with their concept designers. But it's still something that someone worked on, so it's best to leave it alone and create your own redesigns with your own art. I didn't write it in the script, but I did mean to. What I think is a good example of this is this fan art that someone made of their rendition of what Candace would look like, and I think it's absolutely stunning. It just, it looks great, and they don't take anybody else's art to make it, so this is something that I personally think works way better. Don't ask me my opinion on changing the races on other characters in Genshin, because I'm just not up for having that discussion. I want to keep this in relation to Sumeru and Candace and this Candace art because it's the most relative for this video. So no need to bring in the other nations. That being said though, I should mention that I also do personally headcanon Ito being half Mexican just literally only because of the fact that he speaks Spanish sometimes. Is that stupid reasoning and therefore a stupid headcanon? Maybe. Do I care? Absolutely not. I don't give a fuck. That guy's one of us. It's something that exists only in my mind. Not in game, nobody else's mind, just mine, and maybe whoever else happens to think the same. See how innocent and non-harmful a headcanon can be? That was so easy. It's like anybody could do it. I say that, but I still have one more art fixing thing to address, so I guess it's actually not that easy. <laughs> the last situation pertaining to all this art fixing that I'm going to talk about involved an artist deciding to draw the main cast of Scooby-Doo. They drew the original and canon designs of the main five, and it's an adorable piece of work. However, another artist proceeded to, once again, trace over this entire piece without permission and to convey the designs from the Velma Show reboot. The Velma show is widely hated, which I'm aware of. I'm not going to share my opinions of it because I just don't have any. And that's because I don't care. I haven't seen the show nor do I really plan to, so I just... that's all I have. <laughs> all you really have to know is that some people love it for adding inclusivity with people of color, and others hate it for altering the canon designs. There's also the box of people that just hate it because they hate seeing people of color in media, but that's aside the point for now. What's most important currently is that, once again, someone took another person's work and drew over it to push their personal interpretations, all without the original creator's consent. The artist pushed for the inclusivity of minorities with their revised version, which is what feels the most iffy to me. There's nothing stopping this person who does seem to have some artistic skill from just drawing fan art of their own for the Velma show. From what I understand, both of the designs of the Scooby gang are canon. There's the original designs and then there's the ones from the reboot. If you like one design better, then that's entirely fine since, especially with this case, both of them are canon. But to not only trace another artist's work and defend it by implying that they're creating a wedge in the face of inclusivity, you're simply being bigoted yourself. Calling other people bigoted because you refuse to create your own artwork only shows two things projection and a lack of confidence in your own work. Though, based on the revamped version of Shaggy's face with these disproportionate eyes and shaky line work, I can see why you relied mostly on another person's talent to create anything. Looking through this person's profile, it seems it's purely dedicated to unpopular art opinions and baiting people online anyway. 
they're not actually advocating for inclusivity. They just want themselves included in discussions because this is the only time people will ever know their name. There's a bunch of these bait profiles that go about pushing their headcanons in the worst of ways, taking other people's work and tracing over it to show these ideas and interpretations. It's one thing to like the new Scooby designs and to like them specifically for the inclusivity, but to steal someone's work and call them bigoted indirectly is a whole other. I would add a sentiment about how the art community should simply come together, have any opinions and headcanons that they want, and to support each other and simply create more rather than steal, but that's not really the art community anymore. Every facet on YouTube that discusses art, and especially art fixing, is usually centered around drama. What did this YouTuber do? What did that YouTuber do? And what's the right opinion to have on it? The art community is the most divided that it's ever been, so of course some band-aid solutions such as have your own interpretation and make your own art won't be supported. That's not what people want to hear. It's unfortunate, but it's the situation we're in now. This video is mostly meant to document my own opinion since that's apparently what commentary channels do or something, I don't know, so, you know. But it's also to document some of the most notable times that this art fixing has happened. I formatted it in this iceberg sort of way since it helps people view this in the lens of the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is a very multifaceted ordeal and I haven't covered the majority of it. However, I hope this video was still able to provide my personal opinions and reviews over these situations with clarity. I just wanted to end this video off with a huge thank you to all of you. The channel not only recently hit 10,000 subscribers, but I am now officially a YouTube partner. Originally, it was pretty much inevitable that I'd have to take down my two biggest videos in order to be monetized, but now I'm not going to be in that position anymore, which is the best thing I could have hoped for. As well, the community I've grown with you on Discord is just so lively and kind. All the fan art and banter that's accumulated in there just makes it a fun place to hang out with everyone. And it's honestly a highlight of my day to talk to people who enjoy my content. I know this video was more of an opinionated piece, so I'm hoping people can be civil in this discussion rather than hostile in the comments. Thank you so much for the continued support and for sticking to this point of the video. That's all I really have to say anymore, so yeah. Bye. Take off the runway, take off the Cairo. Take off the Sandro, pay five days, day, take off the meal and the five. Take off the car flat, take off perception, take off the pipe with the hot pad. Take off the hunger, take off the unsure, take off the solutions I have.